Morning. How are we doing? All right, so we got year four of the Chip Kelly era at UCLA. Is this uh, enough time? Have you had enough recruiting classes so that 2021 should be a fair assessment of what you can do here at UCLA? Yeah, we're excited about the season. I think our players have had a great off season. Um, have worked extremely hard, um, and we're excited about getting a chance to get on the field and play against Hawaii. Do you feel like you've kind of removed the barriers to success as far as inexperience, depth, and then obviously the first two seasons the defense was an issue? Do you feel like you've fixed all those things? Yeah, I'm really excited about playing Hawaii then. <clears throat> Big picture questions. Great. <laughs> right. Um, all right. Well, what what do you what do you think you needed to get out of the way to have success here? We need to have a really good Wednesday. We live in the moment, and we got to have a great Wednesday today. We did a good job on Monday, did a good job on Tuesday, and excited to put a good Wednesday in and then um, keep our laser focus on playing a lot. A lot of stuff with the, al uh, the Alliance yesterday. Did sure. you get a chance to watch that press conference? Any thoughts or reactions? No, I did not see the press conference. Um, Martin grabbed me before we um, went out on the field because obviously he had talked to the commissioner about kind of what's going on. So um, I think the landscape of college football has changed, obviously, with the expansion of the SEC, so I think the three commissioners that got together are just trying to put together a plan, you know, of what it looks like. I don't know if anybody really knows what the, what the landscape of college football would look like in a couple of years, but um, I think they're trying to be collaborative, which is a smart idea. Um, you know, all three of those guys uh, are really smart. Um, the fact that they said it was unanimous between the 41 institutions that are involved in it is a, is a pretty good deal. So. Um, it was more of just a framework from the way it was explained to me. Um, you know, and then moving forward, they're going to try to really be um, a collaboration between the three conferences to um, be able to handle the adjustments that are going on in the college football right now. So. At the very end of the Q&A, Commissioner Klyovkov said that he would be open to going to the TV partners to talk about dropping the Pac-12 to eight conference games in the near future in order to get in a game within the alliance structure. What are your thoughts on going down to eight conference games? I, I mean, we're, we got as much vote as you guys have. So we, we're always been the, fo the the mindset of tell us what the schedule is and we'll go play it. So, um, you know, we enjoy the, the rivalries that we have in this league. But if you get a chance to play against great teams from the Big Ten and the ACC also, then, you know, we'd be all for that. So whatever they think is the best for the league, I, we've got all the confidence in the world in our commission and in, 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 uh, what they're trying to get accomplished. So, And we've got games scheduled out till 30. Um, so I think it's going to be a ways away. If they, and if they drop it and go to eight conference games, that means you can pick one more up. So um, we'd be excited about that. Last eight. year we saw uh, Chase Griffin uh, come in for Dorian Thompson Robinson. He had uh, he looked prepared, ha had mastery of the offense. Uh, we saw the official depth chart with uh, Ethan Garbers. What do you see from him in terms of uh, preparedness and uh, mastery of the offense? Yeah, Ethan's really sharp, um, he's a real intelligent kid. You know, he's he's got a, a year of college football experience. Um, was here, fortunately for us, during the spring, so he got a chance to really pick up what we've done offensively. Um, and we're excited if Ethan goes in the game, we'll be, you know, we don't have to make any adjustments in terms of play calling or things like that to say, hey, this is the only part that he knows. He's a sharp young man that when, if his opportunity is called upon, then I think he'll be able to go out there and really perform. Jay Shaw, returning starter, wasn't on the two deep. What's, what's going on with him right now? Um, Jay's in the mix. You can only list two, so there's a, we're gonna rotate. We're gonna play a lot of guys on Saturday. We know it's gonna be hot, so. Um, too deep, something that you have to send out, but I wouldn't be really concerned with the too deep, to be honest with you. Jay's going to play a lot of football for us. Same thing with Jay Toya? Um, we'll see on, on Jay. You know, we haven't sat down and talked as a staff um, about what the rotations will be, but I know Jay Shaw definitely will be in the mix. What are you seeing from Garrett uh, DiGiorgio? He was on the too deep. Yeah, uh, Garrett's done a really nice job. You know, he's a, he's a kid we were very excited about in the recruiting process. Um, he is a big athletic you know, he's over 6'6", six, six. He's, he's over 300 pounds. Um, he's picked things up very quickly um, and has f given himself an opportunity that if, um, again, like in Ethan Garbers, uh, if he had to put himself in the mix, he would be in the mix. You're, you're in second lot to last year of your contract, didn't get extended after last year. How do you handle that with recruits who want to know that you're going to be here their whole four years, five years here? Yeah, I've got two years left, and we're excited about those two years. So you know, we'll take care of business on the field, and the rest of it will take care of itself. Is that a problem in recruiting? Has not been a problem. Sam Marazzo is also not on a two deep. Do we mm -hmm. take that as him being unavailable for Saturday? Uh, we haven't made that determination. Again, a two deep was sent on on Monday, so that was the two deep as of Monday. So I guarantee the two deep has changed since today's Wednesday. So, and it will change again on Thursday, and it will change again on Friday. So 
in this world we live in, there could be 20 guys on that too deep that aren't playing on Saturday. So you got to be flexible and you got to have some agility in this thing in this day and age. So. And obviously with, with having pretty much the, the whole offensive line back, uh, some of those younger guys like Garrett aren't starting right away. Is that something that, that's kind of maybe a drawback of having so much returning talent in depth is that those young guys don't get the game snaps that they would have in a, in a different season? Kind of lost me on that. Basically just the, the freshmen who are playing well, who maybe would have got a lot of game snaps two years ago, aren't getting those game snaps this year. Is that a, a drawback of having a lot of returning guys? Or? Having I've never felt like having a lot of returning guys is a bad thing, so we look at it as a positive thing. So, and the best players play. There's, there's always competition, and, and uh, the best players will find their way on the field. You guys have rather than have the alternative where we got to line up with five true freshmen out there and then say, hey, this is a great thing. So, you know, you can spin it any way you want, but I think having depth is a really good thing. So, Coach, what's your team's mindset heading into the first game? They're excited about the opportunity to play. You know, we've, we've, we've uh, last played in, in December. Um, we've been against each other, you know, all through spring training. Um, and then since we started here on the, at, the, at the end of July. So, you know, the fact that we get to play against another team uh, in front of fans, for the first time uh, in a long time for these guys. Um, really get a feel for what it's like to go back and play college football in some sense of normalcy. So we're, we're, they're just excited about that. You know, So um, you can tell there's there's an energy and a juice with this group. Um, but they, they just can't wait to play another team right now. So. You guys haven't won a non-con game since you've been here. How much does that get you? How much do you want to get that out of the way Saturday? Again, we want to win every game we play, Ben, so it doesn't, we don't look at it and, and ever talk to our team about this is non-con, this means this, this is con, this means this, this is a home game, this means this, this is an away game, this means this. I think that just kind of convolutes it. You know, I go like my normal statement that I will say a lot at TBU, it's true but useless. So we're not going to talk to our guys about, hey, this is a conference game, let's approach this differently. Let's, we get an opportunity to play against a really good, well-coached Ty Graham team out of Hawaii and we're excited to go play the game. Is it, is it a different mindset for winning a season opener? Because you haven't won a season. You want to win every game, though. Yeah. I, I don't. I, again, I think you're trying to couch it and maybe write a narrative. But I don't think anybody ever says, "Hey, let's win the opener. We don't care about game two, and game three is not a conference. Let's not worry about that." But then when we get into conference play, we're going to change our mentality. You want to win every opportunity that you get a chance to get on the field. Um, in football, you don't play that many regular seasons games. This is not basketball, baseball, or any of those other sports, so that you don't have that opportunity. So you don't have the opportunity to say that the opener is more important than this game. Every game you play is, is extremely important. and um, You never know what the outcome of the game is going to do down, down the end of the road. So um, every single game we play is important, and every time we get a chance to compete is important. And we only have 12 opportunities right now, you know, between now and, and uh, the end of the season. So we're, we're going to... We're going to put everything we have into this game, and then when this game's over, we're going to regroup and put everything we have into the next one, and so on, and so on, and so on. All right, that's time, Coach. Okay. Thank you. We good? Thank you.